If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? I'm sure many of you have heard this question before. It's about the relationship between observation and reality. Does reality exist and function the same way whether or not it's within our sphere of observation? In real life, that's debatable. But in Minecraft, it's pretty cut and dry. The answer is no. If a chunk lies outside of our render distance, it literally does not exist until we physically move toward it enough to include it in our render distance. So if a tree falls in a forest outside of our render distance, does it make a sound? Well of course not. Trees don't fall in Minecraft, silly. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, this is to say that the render distance is quite limiting. In my post office video, the most common question that I got was what happens when the minecarts enter unloaded chunks? Well, unfortunately, they stop. Kind of makes the whole mail thing a bit useless, huh? Is what I would say if it wasn't for the nether portal. You see, when an entity goes through a nether portal, it loads its own chunk and also the eight surrounding chunks in the other dimension for 15 seconds. Well, actually, it also loads the ring outside of that too, but those don't process entities, so it's not important to us. So today, we will be leveraging a portal to hell to help you send packages to your friends. Yay! Let's begin. So, as you can see, I've already set up a nether portal here, and if you take a look at this bottom corner, you can see that this portal block is on x equals 1000. Now my goal is to send this minecart through this portal and send it to a location that is at x equals 2000, so a total of 1000 blocks, so that's pretty far away. And in order to travel this really long distance, I want to take advantage of the nether. So for those of you who didn't know, one block in the nether is equivalent to eight blocks in the overworld. So that means one chunk in the nether is equivalent to eight chunks in the overworld. That means if we send this minecart through the portal and have it do its entire journey through the nether and then pop back out, it will be traveling eight times as fast as it would be in the overworld. Now we're thinking with portals. So if I go through this nether portal, you can see that I've already got it set up on the other side and I've got it on the roof of the nether. This is because it's nice and flat up here and it's unlikely to mess up anything that's going on in the nether already. So in order to travel 1000 blocks in the overworld, we only need to travel 125 blocks in the nether. So if we divide that by 16 to get the number of chunks, we get 7.8 chunks, which I'm gonna go ahead and round up to eight. So now I'm going to hit F3 and G on my keyboard to get this grid of chunks. And we're gonna go ahead and count out eight chunks in this direction. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a portal down in this chunk right here. So we've got our nether portal on this side as well. It is on a chunk border, but I don't really mind that since uh, when a minecart comes through, it's gonna be loading all the chunks around it as well. And there we go, we have our receiver on the other end. So now back in the nether, you can see that the distance between these two portals is actually not that long, but we still need to be able to load the chunks in between these two portals on the way. So how would we do that? Turning our chunk borders back on, all we have to do is make sure that there is a portal in every single one of these chunks leading up to that portal over there. So it doesn't matter exactly where you put the portals, I'm going to go ahead and put them kind of in the same area as over here. So we have two blocks over here, which means I'm going to go ahead and make it two blocks over here as well. So we're going to go ahead and build that portal up like so, like that and we're gonna continue building these portals every single chunk like this until we hit that portal all the way on the other end. So now that we have all of these in-between portals, we also need matching portals in the overworld, so let's get on that. All right, so I've finished putting down all of the portals, and I even moved this last portal a little bit just to make it in line with everything to make things look a little bit better, but that wasn't totally necessary. And as you can see, it's moved even further back. So this block is at 2024, so it is 1024 blocks away from our original location, which is still pretty dang far. Now in the overworld, you can see it's so much more obvious how far this distance is because of how spread out the portals are. They're spread out by eight chunks instead of just one in the nether. So it makes you realize why we are using the nether for our primary source of transportation. 
Okay, so having these portals here is cool and all, but they're not really doing anything just yet. They're not helping us load these chunks. So let's see what we can do about that. So my plan is to have the minecart come out of this portal and then run alongside all of these other portals except for the last one where it will go in. So as for why it's going to be running alongside these portals instead of into them is because as it does so, it is going to be spitting an item into this portal which will be caught on the other side in the overworld and then spat back. That allows the overworld to be loaded for a brief period of time and it's going to reload this chunk as well as all the surrounding chunks. So what's going to happen is as the minecart travels through this chunk, it is going to spit an item back and forth with this portal, which is going to reload this chunk and also all the surrounding chunks around it, including this next one over here. It is then going to move into this newly loaded chunk and do the same thing with this portal, spit an item back and forth, which is going to reload this chunk and also the next chunk and so on and so forth until the very end. So in order to do this, I'm going to place a couple of droppers down. Uh, I'm also going to break this portal so that I can reach around it. We're going to place a single hopper so that it can receive it from the other end. And in order to activate it, it's just going to be a singular torch that is going to be right there. So we're going to have the minecart come out of this portal, do a bit of a bend like this, and then run alongside this portal here, and then go on a straight line like this. At some point, it's going to run over a detector rail, and then we're going to run a redstone line into this activation circuit right here. And of course, we want this torch to be off by default, so we're going to go ahead and invert that signal there. And now we're going to place any old junk item into this bottom hopper, which will go into this dropper, ready to be fired. And now let's repeat that for every portal down the line. Alright, so now with all of those taken care of, let's go back to the overworld and make ourselves the return circuit. So of course back in the overworld, we're going to want to do the same two dropper setup. So two of them facing like that, and a hopper facing into the bottom one. But instead of just having this, we are going to make this auto return. And so we're going to put a comparator reading off of this hopper here into a block with a torch on it. That torch is going to go into a block, into a piece of redstone, which is going to go into a block, into another torch, which is going to be powering both of these droppers. So now you can see when I drop something into this hopper, it is going to be spat back out immediately. And now we're going to repeat that on all the other portals. And there we go. Let's go ahead and run a quick test. Alright, so we're back here at the first portal, and I've put command blocks at every single portal in the nether just so that we can track its progress. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hit this button. Alright, now keep an eye on chat. Okay, there we go. It passed by portal 1, then 2, 3, so you can see it going all the way through and you can see that these wouldn't be possible if we weren't dynamically loading them and we should see there we go arrived at final portal now i'll show you exactly where that command block is so if we travel through the nether since it's a little bit faster you can see here we go yes so that was this command block right here. So it ran over this rail and there it is right there. So it's actually gone a thousand blocks or over a thousand blocks in that short amount of time. And it went through unloaded chunks and dynamically loaded them by itself, which is awesome. But can it really be that simple? Unfortunately, it can't. So I forgot to mention one very important detail. When an entity goes through a nether portal, it can't go through one again until 15 seconds have passed. So this means that once it enters the first portal, its journey through the nether has to be at least 15 seconds long, or else it can't pop back out into the overworld. With this specific example, we got lucky. 1000 blocks just so happened to be long enough for the minecart to be traveling in the nether for over 15 seconds. So what's the minimum distance for this to work? Well, a minecart can travel at a top speed of 8 blocks per second, which when traveling in the nether is 64 blocks per second in the overworld. So multiply that by 15 seconds and you get 960 blocks. That's pretty far away. 
I mean, what if your friend lives somewhere between your render distance and 960 blocks away? Are we screwed? Well, not exactly. You see, we can force the journey in the nether to be at least 15 seconds by delaying the minecart, and I'm going to show you exactly how. So back in the nether, let's cut this line short and assume that your friend lives at the fifth portal here. So I'm going to redirect this line to go into that portal instead. And so there we go. Let's go back to the first portal and see what happens. Okay, so now we're going to be sending it to the fifth portal. So we should see the messages start popping up. We have portal one, portal two, portal three, portal four. Oh wait, that's right. It's gonna be the fourth portal. Um, so you see that the message didn't pop up. That's because we actually removed the command block. But if we go back in the nether, we can see kind of what has happened here. So let's fly over to the fourth portal. And as you can see, it's just stuck in the portal. It never went through. This is because the journey to get there in the nether was less than 15 seconds, and so it was still on its cooldown when it hit these portal blocks. And since it's already in these portal blocks, it won't go through. So we're going to need to slow it down around here in order to prevent this. All right, so I've moved the entry point of this line from this block to this block just to make things a little bit more compact. You'll see in a little bit, but let's get started with trying to get this thing to stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is punch out a few of these rails and build this kind of pyramid shape like so. Then I'm going to fill this part with regular rails and then put a detector rail on top and then put a fence gate here and a fence gate here. Now these two fence gates will be open by default until a minecart comes through and runs over this detector rail, which will then close these fence gates for a set amount of time before it opens them again. Now the reason that there's two of them is so that this can happen when it is coming in from this portal or when it's coming from this direction. And now to define that amount of time, we're gonna be making use of an etho hopper clock or a modification of an etho hopper clock that is going to be used as a timer. So the first thing that we're going to do is get a redstone output out of this detector rail that's going to go into this block here and we're going to build this L shape. Now don't worry about this for now, we're going to get it replaced soon, but put a sticky piston there, a block of redstone on its face, and then two blocks this way we're going to put a regular piston like so. Underneath that let's put two hoppers facing into each other and then take a comparator output out of both of them on either side, like so, redstone cross on top of that. Put another block here, a comparator reading out of this hopper, a block here, and another redstone dot there. And now let's put a torch right here next to these two droppers. This makes it so that when this timer is halfway through its cycle, it reloads this chunk so that while it's doing its thing, it doesn't accidentally get unloaded. And now let's take out these temporary blocks right here. We're going to replace this one with a trap door. And let's put a scaffolding here, a scaffolding there that's sort of hanging off the edge of that, and another scaffolding on top of this. What this is gonna do is it's gonna send a really fast block update over to this piston to get this timer started. And next we're gonna put a torch here and then from this torch, we're gonna extend a really long power line. Now make sure you go up here so that it leaves room for minecarts to actually go through here. And then you come back down like this, across and then into both of these and then put a redstone line across all of that. Oh, and this also connects here, so make sure that you step up for that one as well. And now to prime the timer, we're going to put 19 items into this left hopper here. Now, why 19? Well, that's because 19 items gives us a total timer length of just over 15 seconds, which is a nice little buffer and safe to use between any distance. But of course, you can always fine tune the timings by taking as many items out of here as you need, but always make sure that you have enough in here or else your minecart still may not make it into the portal. And now with the command block set on the other side, we're ready to test. All right, here it goes. So we sent it into the nether it went through portal one, or not through portal one, but loaded. Portal one, two, and three, we should see a long gap. Now, of course, it is gonna be waiting 15 whole seconds, so I'm gonna be stalling for a bit. 
We should eventually see it pop through Portal 4 though. Any second now. And there it is, made it through Portal 4. So let's go ahead and fly there. Let's go into spectator mode so that we can go a bit faster. So there we go. And you can see this is way outside of our render distance still. And there it is, right there. And you can see right here, made it through Portal 4. And now we can even send it back since I made it bi-directional. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see through Portal 4 and Portal, oh, it didn't actually pause. Oh, that's a problem. Ah, uh, I see, probably came too fast. I wonder if I can just remove maybe one of these rails. Let's see if that works. And yeah, as you can see, it didn't make it through the first portal. So we're gonna have to go back over here and try that again. All right, take two. And we should see a long break before it goes to portal three. And actually, we are seeing a long break. There we go. We do see that this chunk loader was fired and we should see portal three. There we go. Then two, then one, and then it should have gone through the final one. So let's fly back over there and see if it has shown up properly. And there it is, there it is. So as you can see, we can send it both ways comfortably, no problem at all, even though it's closer than 960 blocks away. And there you have it, a cheap and easy way to send minecarts through unloaded chunks. I hope you learned something from this, and if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tutorials like this. Alright, see ya!